let me begin by, by saying uh, that on behalf of the Council of Ministers of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, the Board of Directors, and the entire CTO family, um, thank you to the government and people of St. Kitts and Nevis for being such gracious hosts of this event, and uh, thank you to every participant, and most especially our thanks to uh, the Governor General, Sir Tapley Seaton, for allowing us to use these splendid accommodations for this evening's event. Thank you, sir, for this um, honor you've bestowed upon us. As we all know, the uh, Climate Smart Sustainable Tourism Conference had originally been scheduled for September, but because of the approaching hurricanes, we had to postpone it to now. So this new December date required some adjustment on the part of many, and we truly appreciate your cooperation. We are especially grateful to, to the management and staff of the Ocean Terrace Inn, the Marriott Resort, uh, and um, Kittishan Hill for staying the course, for trusting us, and for believing that Amanda Charles and Kennedy Pemberton and Selma Brown Bramble and the rest of our team would in fact ultimately deliver this event. To our speakers lined up to deliver their knowledge and expertise and to our keynoter Greg McKenzie of the BBC, uh, to the media and to the many volunteers and award recipients, we thank you all for being here. A year ago, the United Nations General Assembly declared 2017 to be the International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development. The aim was to support a change in policies, business practices, and consumer behavior towards a more sustainable tourism sector that can contribute effectively to the sustainable development goals. As we approach the end of 2017, we trust that the world's and our region's focus on sustainable development will not wane, but rather the information we gathered and the hard lessons we learned will be heeded and built upon. In fact, in these closing weeks of 2017, given all that we have encountered as a region and as a tourism industry, there is no better time than now to have a conference that's focused on climate change and sustainable development. Over the next two days, we will likely hear many different definitions of sustainable development. In all probability, some will encompass the notion of balancing the enjoyment and benefits of today's assets against the duty that we all have to ensure their availability for future generations. We recognize that the notion of keeping that right balance is multifaceted. As the Tourism Development Agency for the Caribbean, we at the CTO know very well that every day our member countries are making decisions about how many more visitors they're able to attract how many more aircraft we can possibly accommodate, how much more profitable our tourism business can be, how many more cruise ships can, uh, can be uh, in St. Kitts. Because if we aren't making profits, we aren't able to feed and house our populations or deliver that superb experience our visitors expect. But we also know that harmful emissions contribute to the degradation of our planet. And that the more we do as a global industry to build our tourism numbers, the harder we must work to mitigate the effects of those larger numbers. In the Caribbean, we also know that decreasing our dependency on traditional sources of energy and paying serious attention to the use of renewable energy sources is an imperative if we are to stay competitive. So one of the goals of, of our countries, or all of our countries really, has to be to aim to create a carbon neutral environment, a space in which we as a Caribbean region can lead the world in demonstrating how to reduce 
our carbon footprint. Reducing that carbon footprint doesn't mean stopping the planes from coming. What it does mean is finding creative ways to engage in responsible tourism. This has to be part of the example that the Caribbean sets to the rest of the world to follow. I also believe that what uh, Jamaica's tourism minister, the Honorable Ed Bartlett, meant recently when he uh, declared that the Caribbean must establish itself as a, as a center of resilience is that we have to take all of that together and become a model for the rest of the world in sustainable tourism development. Over the next two days, this conference then will, will help to reinforce that climate change and its attendant threats rising sea levels, natural disasters, more intense weather systems, widespread destruction in major population centers, all of that will not simply go away if we bury our heads in the sand. We have to act. The pain suffered by our brothers and sisters who are rebuilding after hurricanes Irma and Maria cannot be brushed aside. The warnings of our experts must not fall on deaf ears. The excellent work being done by the Caribbean Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology and by Dr. Ken Leslie and Dr. Ulrich Trotz of the Five Seas, the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, must be endorsed and supported regionally and internationally. Likewise, we have to ensure that the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDEMA, whose representative has kindly agreed to participate in this forum with us, is properly funded and fully supported. Our policies and decisions today in regard to design and construction, disaster preparedness and mitigation, community involvement, and most of all, our ongoing programs to educate our people at all levels will help to determine what kind of Caribbean we will pass along to our children. But friends, it is critical for us to remember that while we focus on the preservation of assets, for future generations, and the MC very kindly referred to the fact that she thinks that I am younger than I really am. I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm a granddad and, and, and I have a responsibility to do what I can to pass today's assets along to my grandchildren. But we have to remember that the effects of climate change are being felt right now today. The only thing futuristic about Hurricanes Irma and Maria is that they could come again. Climate change is something that's happening today. So I close with these three very simple questions. Is the Earth's temperature rising? Is it affecting our ability to survive here in the Caribbean and around the world? And what can we do about it? Clearly, those questions will be answered in some considerable detail over the next two days. Let's get to work. Thank you. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.